Okay, but let, so let's deal with the realities of it. How do you deal with these episodes is what we want to know. Personally, I find that if I, the more caffeine I drink or consume, that it gets worse. And with anxiety, wow. of course. And to some degree, after a while, you, you just realize what it is. And <laughs> with a human effort, if you will, you can control it to some degree, not perfectly. Uh, so when you feel when you feel the need to scream out or whatever, you can control it now without medication. I don't have that kind of problem. Uh, and again, the pediatrician I've seen a number of cases of Tourette's. Not all of them spring out with these with these uh, uh, foul language. Uh, there are a lot of cases of Tourette's that are much milder than that. Not all of and what, them. And 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 th that's why I wasn't joking when I said at the beginning. I wonder where Tourette's ends and just speaking your mind begins. I don't know the difference here. Well, yeah, I think I, my experience with Tourette's is, is to speak in your mind, you're, you're expressing something logical. Tourette's, the words just come out. It's, it's oh, not. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, okay. But it is an anxiety, it, it is an anxiety disorder, doctor, correct? Well, anxiety will make it worse. But uh, actually, there's some evidence in the literature that it may be related to strep infections. So there, there really is no one test to diagnose Tourette's. I mean, like what about people. what, doc, doctor? What about alcohol? If if coffee makes it worse, does alcohol diminish the symptomology? Uh, for me, I've not noticed alcohol affects it one way or the other. So what calms you down? What do you use? Not, nothing. I d I just. I, you know, by habit, you, you realize what you're doing and you try to calm down. Uh, and again, I realize certain situations make it worse. And when that happens, I, I just, to some degree, calm myself. But to some Amazing. degree, it just, it just happens. And the twitching, I can't do a whole lot about after oh, a while. Wow. Well, you know, I, I so admire people who struggle with major, major issues and decide in their own through their own willpower to overcome them i mean it's it's beautiful to hear it's very inspirational frank here you are i just touched on the topic casually because i saw a show on it last night about these poor kids it, it's one of my things in my life is when i see kids suffering and i, I just drives me crazy because of my brother that's why i made such an issue of the yazidi girls being tortured and raped and why i'm so angry at hillary clinton for being a liar and not saying one word about this travesty going on in front of our eyes and I, I just talked about it. I don't know a, f a thing about Tourette's, nothing. But I was wondering if a person who blurts out inappropriate comments is much different than someone who blurts out appropriate comments, as we do on talk radio. That was sort of semi-comedic, but not really comedic. I wonder if there's some similarity somewhere, because, you know, not everybody can speak their mind, Frank. As a doctor, I think you can understand what I'm saying. There are people who want to say what they feel. They don't even know how to do it. Oh, yeah, but that, yeah. I, and and some are more gifted at being able to say things. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you for the oblique compliment. <laughs> we well, have to walk a we have to walk a tightrope and talk radio every day. We have to say our mind and pray to God we don't get fired for saying too much of our mind. Frank, let me send you a Christmas gift. Government Zero, written by Michael Savage. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. I think our success with our members is that in the Republicans' obsession uh, with lifting the oil export ban, they really gave away the score. Uh, Democrats were able to strip the, our scores and scores of poison pills, destructive poison pills, some of which they had to have, which they ended up with not having. So they asked Pelosi, basically, leak. she may have Tourette's. She just gave up what exactly happened in the budget deal. She sounds like a nut, a nut case. I don't know what she has, but she's not all there. We know that. That's why she succeeded so wildly in Congress. You know, when you're in a bug house, if you're bugger, buggier than the rest of them, you, you, you rule the pack if you're a bigger nut than they are. What do you think? They're all sane and normal because they can put on a suit and tie. But she says what, what's true. I said it to you yesterday. Mitch McConnell is one of the worst people in the history of the Congress. I call him affectionately the gobbler because his, his chin looks like a turkey gullet. 
the gobbler gave up everything for coal. That was six months ago. And now the oil lobby got the oil uh, import-export ban lifted, which is all they wanted was the right to sell oil overseas, which is a good thing uh, for us. In a way, it's a good thing. I'm not so sure it's 100% good, by the way. But nevertheless, it'll lower the price of, uh, of uh, fuel. That's all they cared about. They don't care about anything else. And this is what happens when you have a rogue government that doesn't care about the country. In fact, it's even worse when you have a rogue government that hates the country, like this one. And this rogue administration, which is transforming America into an unimaginable Frankenstein, which may never ever... It's like Humpty Dumpty, you know, had a great fall. Humpty Dumpty and cracked once it fell. This man is breaking this country in a way that it may never be... The fissures he's creating may never be healed. This crazy man in the White House has taken an axe to the egg called America and has so broken the shell that it may never be repair reparable. And the reason it's happening is because of the lobbyists like those who put this guy Quisling Ryan in power. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. I don't know. Look, maybe I'm moving into an area that you don't want to hear about, but I got to go down this road. I open the door on Tourette's. I know nothing about it. And now I get this from a, a person I trust a great deal. He just sent this to me. And I want to read it to you. He says, although vocal and motor tics are the hallmark of Tourette's syndrome, such other symptoms as the expression of socially inappropriate comments or behaviors. <laughs> Who's not responsible for that? Obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh-huh. Check that. Attention deficit disorder, check that. Self-injuring behavior, check that. Depression, check that. Anxiety, check that. Also appear to be associated with Tourette syndrome. Most research suggests that Tourette syndrome is an autosomal dominant disorder, although a gene responsible for Tourette has not yet been discovered. Tourette syndrome is found in all populations and all ethnic groups, but is three to four times more common in males than females. And is more common in children than adults. The exact frequency of Tourette syndrome is unknown, but estimates range from 0.05% to 3%. That's interesting. So, socially inappropriate behavior. I mean, socially inappropriate comments or behaviors, check. OCD, check. Attention deficit disorder, check. Self-injuring behavior, check. Depression, check. And anxiety. So, that means you have Tourette if you suffer these things? Interesting. Maybe some of us do and don't even know it. Who knows? I think it's trick is to just keep trucking through everything, frankly, in life, if you can. Unless you're so overwhelmed by symptomology of this or any other syndrome, and you can't. You know, if you let yourself get pulled, here's the thing, if you let yourself get pulled down into self-analysis of what's wrong with yourself, you can wind up uh, incapable of moving. You say, I can't do this, I can't do that, I'm depressed, I'm anxious, I'm this, I'm that, and you wind up becoming a hermit you don't go out of your house you don't talk to anybody you become fearful and then you become basically a hermit that's not a good thing obviously so what's the answer to that which is i guess you know don't overanalyze your own problems it has to be that simple you can't sit there and control you know say this is not right that's not right in yourself and others every minute of the day and this is part of the problem i think with talk radio we in talk radio have to continue to con attack. That There's no other word for it. There's no way to make it nicer. We attack the political structure that we despise, that we believe is wrong and bad for the country and bad for the individual. Okay, that's what we do. But if you do this two, three hours a day, constantly looking at the flaws of the opposition, which is what we do, it has a very damaging effect upon us, we in the talk business. We may not, I don't know who else will admit it but, but me. But what happens is you become more critical than you normally are. And I think we all start out as very critical individuals. Ask anyone around us if that's who we are. They don't like it very much. We're constantly picking on them, I guess, just as we pick on the opposite. Even if we're right, and we are usually right. I mean, my analysis is as brilliant as it can get. I know that. I mean, I'll self-diagnose. My analysis of what this character is doing to this country is 100% right. We're in grave danger because of the maniac running the country and lunatics, greedy lunatics like Nancy Pelosi, who have agreed that you can never imagine. But anyway, even if we are correct, the price that we pay is extremely high is what I'm saying to you. 
And uh, there's no furtherance to what I want to say at this time about that. There's no, nothing more that has to come from me. I'd rather cut it off at this juncture rather than keep going on. So, like, for example, you know, you all have, we all have to find ways to cope with who we are at the end of the day, with all of our warts, right? We have to live with all of our warts, and we have our ways of coping. With some, it's running. With some, it's gym. With some, it's uh, vitamins. With some, it's alcohol. With some, it's who knows what, whatever anyone does. Religion. You could argue that religion is a way of dealing with anxiety. Couldn't you? Couldn't you argue that religion is a way of dealing with grotesque anxiety? That you think that there's a higher power that's looking over you and is going to take care of you? Now, whether you believe it or not, right? Isn't it a form of anxiety uh, relief? So there are many things that people do. Some create with their anxiety. In fact, most of the best creators I've ever studied are extremely anxious individuals. They take their nervous energy, so to speak, and convert it into a piece of sculpture or a painting or a writing or a talk show. That, that's what artists do. That's what creators do is they, they channel their anxiety. They work with it like a piece of stone. The worst thing you can do to it is, is deaden it. Strangely enough, that's the truth. The worst thing you can do is deaden your anxiety. Because uh, that's the challenge, just to learn how to channel it without letting it overwhelm you. I, just some random thoughts, that's all. Not, not, no, I mean, it's like a quiet week in radio. It's a quieter day in the cafe. Think of this as Cafe Savage, and that it's normally packed to the rafters, and you can't even get into the cafe. And I'm the guy behind the counter who owns the, 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 the cafe, and you're coming in to have a coffee and talk with me and friends. Well, today the cafe is half full. It's not half empty. That means it's half full, not half empty. So there's still plenty of people who want to talk and want to think. Not everybody shuts their minds off in these two weeks, which is why I chose to be on the radio. I mean, most people are off, not all. Some are off. That's their decision. I was going to be on right now through New Year's Eve. I'm probably not going to be on. I'm thinking about it. Like, I'll be on today. I'm on already half the show. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a half the show's already over, which is hard to believe the mood I'm in. I don't know how I got this far, the mood I'm in. I don't know how I got this far at all today. And I'll be on tomorrow, God willing. But Thursday, Christmas Eve, I'm off. I was going to be on, I'm off. I'm off Christmas Day because, no, you know, you know people and it's presents or whatever. I actually, in the past, have been on on both days. I would never take any days off. In fact, I like the holidays more than any because I knew there were a lot of people who didn't want to just shut their brains down. Then... Then I'm um, going south over the weekend. That means Los Angeles, not Florida, where I have a brand new Los Angeles studio, which I've never used. It's taken months to build. Months I've never used it. It sits there with the wires running hot. It's like having water on the boil and you don't boil anything. <laughs> I'm paying these huge bills for ISDN costs and this and that. So Monday will be my first show from Los Angeles. I hope you'll listen to that one. And I may take a few days off next week, although I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to go after L.A. I may not go to anywhere. I may come home. I may go to Florida. I don't know. I don't really, I'm not a big traveler. Oops. I'm not a huge traveler. I don't want to be away from Teddy for that long. See, now, he's one of my methods of coping, to be honest with you, with the world. I mean, what do we, what do we have our pets for? A man originally had a pet as a guard dog and a hunting dog, right? And most of us, some of us still do, but the majority of pets are not. They're calming agents. Like right now, as I'm speaking to the little fellow's asleep, upside down with his entire innards showing to me. He don't care. His legs are open. What does he know? Hands are on his chest. He's snoozing away. He don't care. He doesn't have a care in the world. So when I look at him, I feel he calms me down. Or I touch his little fur, and I can see a little smile emerge on his face, even while he's sleeping. If I walk near him in the studio, and I say, Teddy, how are you? Like I used to talk to my brother. I see a little smile, like he looks like a little porpoise. He's not even awake, but I see the smile. So what does that do for us as humans? It, it has a feedback mechanism to us. It calms us down. It makes us feel safer. It, it reduces our anxiety. Why? I don't know why, because if the animal feels safe, we feel safe. And then we have a, a job as big brother to protect them. We must protect our little friends. So that's also something. It brings out a protectiveness in us, you know? Anyway, I think we move, we're going to move on from this uh, illness and the H, H1B stuff. Who knows? You could stay on the line if you want to call about that. I'm not, I'm not certain what I really want to talk about today. I'm in a, I wouldn't say I'm in a strange mood. 
I'm in a different mood. It's not that focused. It's a little kind of different because I know the 